Sometimes in life, dreams just forever just feel like dreams. Nothing more, nothing less. But often we disqualify or discredit ourselves because we think we're not enough. We think the skills and talents we have is not sufficient enough. But in most cases, that's not true. What I have realized is that we as individuals are all different and possess different skills and talents. Therefore, it's so important to make use of the resources around us, our gifts, our talents, and the support we have in order to elevate and grow as individuals. Do not discredit what you have, where you are, or the journey you've been on. Do not disqualify yourself. Do not stop the pursuit of your goals as they are attainable and reachable. Don't stop dreaming because dreams are free. So why not dream big? With that all said and done, let's talk. What makes doing a PhD difficult? That's really ironic right now because it's, I think, about quarter past nine or 9.17 on a Friday evening and I'm still in the lab. (laughs) Yeah, this is the life. This is the life. Um, But I asked a couple of my colleagues within my lab who are doing a PhD what makes a PhD difficult and these are their responses. There's a lot of difficulties with doing a PhD, such Mm -hmm. as getting in trouble with the lab manager. (laughs) No, it's the constant need to find inspiration from the surroundings and the people around you about which projects to take on and which projects not to take on. I'm just kidding. It's literally just like figuring out what you're going to eat the next day. That's probably the most difficult thing. (laughs) Every night I go home and I'm just like, like, what am I having for lunch tomorrow? Sitting very close to you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Alex! First deciding what you want to do and then also making sure if it works. Um, so you think that everyone else knows what they're doing um, but, and you think and who wears music. You have no idea mm-hmm. and you're falling behind but actually everyone's in the same boat. I think the hardest part about doing a PhD is just having to like sit with the discomfort of being really bad at something (gasps) and like obviously we're learning and we're all here to learn but it's like constantly having to make mistakes and then pick yourself up and kind of repeat the same thing over and over again um it can be quite taxing emotionally if you have to be your own project manager that if you have a job there's your boss who tells you this is what you need to do whereas here It's like you can do anything and how do you manage your time where how do you decide what to do and what not to do? Probably having a good like balance and knowing where to stop. (laughs) Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. (laughs) I know it's been ages since I've had a sit down video or any video by any standard or any matter. I mean, I I think I've been doing YouTube shorts for a while, but it's not been quite substantial. Um, But guys, I am back. I am here and I am ready to stay. (laughs) But if you're new here, uh, my name is Samuel Dada and I'm a PhD student at the University of Cambridge um, in the Department of Chemistry looking at all things neurodegenerative diseases from Alzheimer's to Parkinson's disease. But this video is not going to be delving into my research um, per se, as you've seen by the title. It's looking at what makes doing a PhD very difficult. Um, I'm currently in my third year of my PhD. Um, So I've been through, you know, a little bit of a journey, halfway through the journey. And the PhD has been fun. It's been extremely rewarding. Um, I've enjoyed it so much. Um, But that doesn't stop it from being challenging like anything in life. In life, you go through ups and downs, peaks and troughs, you know, good moments, bad moments. And that's literally just the same as doing a PhD. But... 
the PhD has some unique aspects that makes it so challenging and I'm going to delve into it. Um, this are uh, maybe, you know, issues that are maybe obviously personal to me. So I'm not going to generalize it to say that everyone's going through this. As you've seen by my colleagues, everyone has a unique, you know, points that makes um, doing a PhD very challenging to them. Um, apart from obviously Maddie Hugo is, oh, I'm the one that makes it challenging. I mean, yeah, maybe I, I do. Um, but I have decided to maybe make a list to just make it more focused um, and I, I was just kind of reflecting upon, you know, my journey um, through this to where I am right now um, in this PhD, in this PhD life, should I call it, or this PhD sphere that I'm in. Um, and I've written a whole list, well, not too long of a list, but things that I feel like are very key um, that have made this whole experience very challenging in itself. And I feel like some people can relate to it. You might be able to relate to it, you might not be able to relate to it. But let me stop blabbing on and let's get straight into it. So what makes doing a PhD hard or difficult? The first thing I have right here on my list is that feeling of isolation. You know, when you're doing a PhD, you're delving into an area of research or topic that has not been covered fully by anyone else. You're going to be an expert in this field um, or deemed as an expert once you graduate in this field. And the whole journey and the process to get in there is a very isolating experience. And, you know, um, that sense of independence where sometimes it feels like no one understands you or no one understands your research or no one can actually help or aid you in your research can feel sometimes very, very heavy because you could ask everyone, anyone for help. You know, you could talk to so many people, but at the end of the day, you're the one doing that research and sometimes no one can actually help you. And when things are going bad, when you're not getting the results you want, when you're not feeling that sense of motivation, no one is like, boy, you are working hard, you're working your ass off. But it's a shame that you're not getting anything and there's still a reward for you. During a PhD, sometimes there is literally no reward. Even when you do well, sometimes there's no reward. You have to find that motivation within yourself. You have to be the one treating yourself, giving yourself a pat on the back and also understanding what is actually important for you. What do you want to actually gain out of, you know, this whole experience itself? You know, it's publications, the thing that drives you, you know, is getting good results on, you know, in your experiment, the thing that drives you, is making an impact with your research, the thing that drives you. You know, finding that kind of question within the whole thing is something that's very, very important to do before actually embarking on this whole journey. And I think also, like, one of my colleagues kind of touched upon it. You know, you are, technically, you have your supervisors, you have your colleagues, but you are technically your own manager. I was in the lab um, from, I think, about 10 a.m. to 9.15 p.m., but I did not plan to be in the lab for that long, for almost 11 hours. But that's just the way it went. You know and that's something that's kind of out of my control and not having that you know control over things sometimes is very very challenging um, and it's very very hard to get your head around because like you know you might make prior commitments with friends or families but sometimes you don't understand that you know you can't just leave you know you've literally started this and a lot is holding on this and this is technically you know when you're doing a PhD it's kind of like a job but not really at the same time. Because another thing that brings me on to doing a PhD that makes it very difficult is money. Whew. This is a very, very heavy topic right now, simply because obviously the cost of living is increasing um, and rising and being able to sustain yourself mentally, physically, emotionally as a PhD student is very, very difficult. As one of my colleagues said at the beginning, he said, um, one thing that makes it very challenging is actually knowing what to eat the next day. <laughs> it's as simple as that. You know, knowing what to eat the next day, because in order for you to conduct your research in the most productive and efficient way, where you're getting the most out of yourself, you need to sustain your body. And food is fuel to your body. 
And sometimes when you have to think about that, when that's weighing heavy, heavily on you, how are you gonna make progress in your research? You know, we're not getting paid a lot to work that amount of hours that we're doing. You know, a lot of people who are doing a PhD, some of your friends and stuff have kind of gone on to do other things, working, earning good money, having houses, you know, having that, you know, proper adult life. And sometimes you're kind of stuck in this position where nothing's progressing but I can encourage you that you know things will always get better you know all the sacrifices that you put in right now will always pay dividend later on and that's just an encouragement for myself as well and for you if you're watching this as a PhD student this is kind of a different aspect owning your own projects you know how do you actually own your own project sometimes because you have you're in this conflict of you know can I collaborate with people is actually this project my own idea you know is it actually stemming from the motivation of my supervisor but I just have to execute it sometimes that can be very challenging because sometimes a lot of us students we go into doing a PhD with a mindset of what we want to do an idea of what we think it's going to be like and it completely you know, it's completely different from our expectations. And sometimes that's very, very difficult to manage and, you know, get your head around that, you know what, am I actually truly doing what I set out to do when I came here? Or, you know, what, what actually motivates me? Or am I doing something completely different or just, you know, fueling someone else's motivation? So owning your project, only your dissertation, only your research sometimes can be very, very tricky because at the end of the day, a lot of us are not funded by, you know, ourselves and we're not self-funded so we can't just go about and do whatever we want. We're actually, we have supervisors who guide us, who tell us the route to go. And at the end of the day, you know, supervisors are also humans and they don't get everything right at the same time. And you know, when you don't own that, you know, when you don't feel like you have ownership over your project or over the direction of your project, when things go bad, it could feel very, very, very challenging. And then also the whole thing to do with motivation comes into it, where you feel like you can't actually motivate yourself or push yourself to actually find out what the reason or what the problem is on the project. And I think this whole aspect comes down to having a very good supervisor or very good you know um, people around you who are able to guide you but also able to listen to you listen to you what your goals what your interests are you know because if they're able to listen to you they're able to figure out you know okay this is the direction this person wants to go into and I'm going to enhance that, I am going to elevate that and I'm going to encourage them to do it even if I don't think it's the right way to go or if personally I don't think that's the direction I'm going to and also finding a good supervisor who is going to do that or going to enhance that is also very very difficult and that relationship is a relationship that needs to last over a long period of time for three years or four years, depending on what program or the, the duration of your PhD is. And building that relationship, a solid foundation, is sometimes very, very tricky and very difficult. And also having your own voice or, you know, being able to get your own voice to be listened to is also very tricky sometimes as a PhD student. The next one is <laughs> staying social. <laughs> Staying social, um, I mean, I, I, I can testify for this, I'm very good at that, um, I don't have any problems with it, but I, I do see and I do see other people have problems with, you know, staying social or staying in the loop. Um, I think I maybe sometimes do take it too far by staying social, but I actually sometimes forget that I'm doing a PhD or people do forget that I'm also doing a PhD and I'm researching. Or I think the problem I do have personally is I tend to spread myself way too thin to the point that I am exhausted and that's another reason why I feel like sometimes I don't even do the PhD because um not PhD the YouTube um because I feel like I get myself involved in so many different things um right now I could even say I don't know how many things I've got myself involved in and managing all that and managing my time around that is sometimes very 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 tricky um I, I love being busy and I enjoy it but also, 
sometimes you need to take care of yourself take care of your mind take care of you know your body have time for yourself those down times are so so very very important but also on the other extreme some people are always by themselves and like i said isolation and feeling lonely is already a big massive thing when undertaking your project but also if you're doing that socially that can make motivation very very difficult and that's not really good for your mental health so i always encourage people to get involved in various societies if they can but not too much everything in moderation not too much so get involved in societies get involved in things that you you love you know i have a great privilege of obviously being at cambridge university and cambridge university it has a collegiate system and this collegiate system means that you're able to meet people from various walks of life who are studying very different things and it means that i can have conversations with other people about you know their research or completely something completely nonsense or you know different and that is sometimes very refreshing you know than being in the lab and always talking about the same topics over and over again so being sociable or getting yourself out there and doing what you love, whether it's sports, getting involved in society, extracurricular things like outreach, it's so important for you to get yourself involved in whilst doing a PhD because it breaks things down. It breaks things down from being just that hard graft and struggle all the time of having and searching for results to so having something to focus on or having something to motivate yourself with. The next one is the whole big question of imposter syndrome. And I think imposter syndrome is something that everyone goes through in all aspects of your life. Sometimes you can feel like you're not worthy of, you know, doing this or you don't feel like you actually deserve to be in the place and space that you are. Based on the fact that sometimes you feel like everyone knows more than you. Or when people ask you questions, you're like, I actually don't know. And that sometimes can feel like you're, you're not making progress or you feel like, wait a minute, hold on a minute, what am I actually doing this? What am I actually doing here? How did I even get here? Do I even deserve to be here? But, you know, that's a challenge that we all have to deal with ourselves and that's why it's so important to realise that everyone has various gifts and talents. Everyone has different skill sets and it's so important for you to realise that, you know, other people's paths are so different from your path. And when you're doing a PhD, that could not be more apparent because you're doing a different project from someone else. So if you feel like they're making progress in their research and you're not, it doesn't mean anything. It just means that, you know, the direction that they're in is just perfect at this point in time, but they may be dealing with their own struggles later on. So having that confidence and not comparing yourself with other people is so important. So always ask questions, always try and find out, you know, if anyone can help you. You know what? Because everyone literally feels the same way. Sometimes I do sit in, you know, group meetings and I'm like, I do not even understand or have a clue what this person is talking about, what their research is on, but I'm in the same lab as them. Does everyone else around me understand? Or is it just me? Why is everyone asking questions? Because I don't have any questions to ask, you know? But we need to always understand that we all learn differently. We all have different understandings. And just because other people know about that aspect doesn't mean that they know about your own aspect, you know? You could know so much more about one aspect than other people. So just understand that and just having that kind of closed mind to understand that your own journey and understanding that you are different from other people is so important to avoid getting yourself into that mindset of feeling like you don't belong or you don't know because you do. You got there for a reason. You are there for a reason. And as long as you have the drive, motivation and love for what you're doing, you're going to succeed. There is no way you're not going to succeed. Next and probably the final one is... <laughs> Which is actually going to be very, very, very shocking to people, for me personally, is public speaking. I love speaking about everything apart from my research publicly, but when it comes to my research, I just don't like doing it. Um, and it's something I feel like I need to kind of delve in and try and understand why, the reason, what the reason is. Um, 
but when it comes to other things, I'm fine. You know, like this, I'm totally fine. But when he starts talking about my research and stuff like that, I just do not like it. And this is something that has obviously made my whole PH experience very, very, not very difficult to be honest, but has limited my experience in a way because I could have been gone on various conferences and, you know, explored the world, gone to various places and spaces, you know, you know, to give talks or give presentations on my research, but I actually don't enjoy it. I don't like doing it for some reason. Um, and I don't know what it is personally, but sometimes I feel like maybe in my own mindset, I feel like I have a very different way of thinking. And when I hear, you know, professors speak and give presentations, I'm just like, wow, they were using all these words and all these things. And I, there ain't no way I'm going to be using those words. They make things so complicated but i have a different way and mindset of how i feel like you know presentations to go um that i feel like a lot of people within especially my industry the science and academic field don't do which is you know break things down and not really show 10 and ten thousand results you know i feel like everyone's always focused on you know showing loads of results showing what they've done rather than you know actually giving people the pure understanding and I feel like if I was to go and give a talk and you know give people the basics I feel like it would just be looked down upon so I actually don't like giving you know presentations and stuff about my own research simply because I just feel like it's not going to be appreciated maybe that's a thing I mean I haven't delved into it but I always have this you know phobia and this fear I love giving presentations in general but about my research I don't for some reason and maybe there's something I need to unpack and something I need to deal with but I think I'll deal with it eventually and I hopefully I'll find the answers as to why um, that's the case but that could also make your whole experience challenging because everyone is like you know I'm going to this conference you know in next week and I'm like I would love to go to you know to where wherever it was San Francisco or Barcelona or you know whatever but what am I going to do if I'm not going to give a presentation or, you know, a research presentation? Anyway, guys, so that's pretty much it for me today. Um, I think one last thing I just want to leave with everyone or anyone who's thinking about doing a PhD or if you're doing a PhD right now is that this is such a unique experience, an amazing and rewarding experience to go through. And it's so important, like my dad says to me all the time, is that you need to enjoy that journey. Make the most of that journey because there's a day that's gonna come and you don't wanna look back on it and say, I wish I had made the most out of this experience. Actually, a PhD is literally what you make of it. It is literally what you make of it. And it's so important for you to grab hold onto all those opportunities that come your way. Grab onto all those resources that are right there in front of you. Make use of it so you don't regret it later on in life but if you've loved this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up press that notification bell because you're going to be receiving a lot of videos from me so make sure you press that notification bell to get notified about any videos i release and make sure you comment down below on you know your thoughts about this um, give me some questions just just interact with me i feel sometimes very lonely on this um on this channel because no one is making comments so please put some comments down below i want to see people engaged but anyway make sure you also subscribe to my channel as well um i love that this channel is growing even though i'm not doing anything sometimes it's growing and it's elevated and it's such a joy to see but anyway guys take care and like i said always say in at the end of my videos make sure you dream big and keep being inspired Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned. Take care. Stay blessed. Goodbye.